everyone. I am Dr. David of UCS Advisors. We help you achieve your greatness. I'm very honored and privileged to have the CEO and co-founder of Conception here today, Mr. Kevin Brooks. Kevin, thank you for being here today. Dr. David, thanks for having me. Nice to see you. So, Kevin, you know what? Your company's really unique. It's something that's needed in the industry. And let's just jump right into it. So walk me through a brief history of one, what is Conception? And secondly, what's the history of the company? Started in 2018. Uh, we launched as a tissue culture micropropagation company. Uh, that's, a, that's a long-winded way of saying we produce large quantities of very beautiful, healthy, vigorous plants. We currently operate in three states. We have two more states uh, right behind it. Uh, and we have a facility being built in Portugal. Our flagship operations in California got up and running in 2020, and we've emerged as the largest cannabis plant provider in the world. Now, our plants are only about this big. They're three and a half, four inches big. So we do not grow them to full term. But I think, you know, we recognized pretty early on that there was a lack of stable, healthy genetics in the space. And that's what Conception's uh, here to do. So talking about that, from my understanding, you are producing revenue. You're a revenue generating company, correct? That's right. Yes. Um, we showed 200% year over year revenue growth between 2020. Two in 2023, and we're on track to double our revenue again in 2024. Well, if you're growing that quickly, obviously you must be solving some problem. So what problem is conception solving? You know, uh, growers every day are faced with issues around pests, around disease. Um, most cultivation facilities, in fact, all cultivation facilities that we're aware of uh, have what's called a mother room or an in-house nursery. And, and the reason why uh, cannabis grows have these in-house nurseries is because external nurseries really don't exist like they do in traditional agriculture. And so um, what we are trying to do is bring cannabis cultivation standards up to 2024 traditional agriculture environments um, standards. So for example, Dr. David, if you and I opened up a blueberry farm in, um, oh, you're Maine. up there in Maine, right? We have the, yep. One of the largest blueberry farms being built right now in Maine, uh, at least tissue culture facilities. We, we wouldn't buy our blueberry genetics from just some guy we know in the market, right? We would call up a professional company like Driscoll's and we'd say, hey, Driscoll's, here's our longitude and latitude. This is uh, the type of blueberries we're looking to grow. What would you recommend? What are the best practices? And really that's what conception is. We are becoming to a certain extent the um, the authority on what cultivars grow in what environments. But more importantly, we help de-risk op de operations by providing with clean growers of clean, healthy, vigorous plants. What truly differentiates conception from your competitors and being a lot of competitors in general? Micropropagation is very tough. Tissue culturing is very challenging. So from a large scale commercial uh, perspective, we don't have any natural competition. What we do see in the space are traditional nurseries um, and traditional nurseries have all the same issues as you would find with the mother room. And those are issues around not being able to guarantee uh, performance tested plants that are proven to be clean and, and, um, and pest and viroid free. NJ Insights did a report recently that, that uh, demonstrated about $2.4 billion is lost in 2024 on, uh, on viroids and pests in cannabis. 2025, it ratchets up to about $2.75 billion. So it's a, it's a real problem uh, that we are helping our customers with. Well, no, no competitors as of yet, which is a good thing. It means you're sure. really, you know, sure. disrupting the market, which is also, you mentioned earlier, if, if you grew 200% from the previous year, all right, now you expect to grow another 200%. You know, I, I guess my, my natural question is, really, you, you mentioned some billion dollar numbers. So really, how big is this issue around pests and diseases for the cultivators? Yeah, um, I think the best way to put it is you can spend all the money in the world on a, a beautiful facility. Um, you can have a nice outdoor grow. You can have a greenhouse grow. Um, and we've seen it, right? We've seen uh, very experienced growers that, that doesn't um, address the supply chain base. It doesn't address your genetics. And so, you know, from our perspective, it doesn't matter, you know, how much automation or how much, you know, we invest in pest pressures. There will always be challenges around cultivating at scale, specifically with re re regards to viroids and performance tested plants. And so when we, when we talk to our customers, I think that the value that we bring them really is in, um, is giving them genetics that they know grow at commercial scale, but but more importantly, um, that they can count on in terms of uh, consistency and quality. If you go to Starbucks in, in any 
you know, Starbucks across the U.S., you're going to get the same Pike's Place. We don't have that in cannabis, and that's really uh, one of the benefits of growing from tissue culture. So, and now I'm kind of spitballing here with the t- with the tissue culture, especially multiple state operators that are in numerous states. So pretty much you can kind of help that multiple state operator or these canvas companies that are that want to be in multiple states have a consistent product then. So whether they have a a blue dream out of California, a blue dream out of New Jersey, or a blue dream out of Michigan, if they're using conceptions genetics, you're going to have the same consistency. Is that kind of a, a, a good analogy right there? That's exactly right. I think first and foremost, um, we spend quite a bit of time on the front end um, validating that the strain that we got is the actual strain that you're buying, which is a huge problem in this space. You know, to take it a step further, we run extensive performance trials. So we can tell you, hey, Dr. David, this is going to perform excellent in your environment, or hey, we'd recommend a different cultivar that will perform different environment. At the end of the day, it's the exact same product every single time. And that's not something you you would typically get with traditional propagation. And it's, it seems to be a reoccurring issue in the space. You can go to you know dispensaries up and down California or Nevada and buy the same strain from different growers. And it is almost a completely different product. Where some of the stuff you're talking about, can a company work with conception, um, even if they're already up in operation as a cultivator? Or is it, hey, we only work with conception before we even do our very first crop? Or is it both? It's a little bit of both. Um, we have an open source menu of our own genetics that um, that we feel perform very, very well. We've got a tremendous amount of data, but we also work with um, you know brands and um, uh, different cultivation groups on taking their plants in house, cleaning them up, and then providing them back. So it's really entirely up to the grower. We can uh, you know pivot our model, whatever works best for uh, for the cultivator. And let's talk about the company for a second. Um, In the very beginning, I believe you're in currently three states. Is that correct? That's right. Um, Two of our states are what we call our our satellite labs or mini lab. And and that is a a large scale commercial cultivator that has come to us and said, hey, we're experiencing um, degradation in performance. We're experiencing pest pressures. Um, We have no consistency on our menu. Can you come in and help us? And the answer is absolutely. We set up a, a small lab, we clean their genetics, we open up our menu, uh, and we provide them with a, uh, a consistent output. And so we have two um, satellite labs or mini labs up and running. We have another two under LOI, which are currently being built out. And then we have our hub out of California. The California facility has the capacity of around 700, 750,000 plants a month. For 2024, and even going into next year, 2025, what does expansion look like for conception? We have, I mean, virtually every state, we've got a handful of folks um, that are talking to us about uh, opening up satellite labs in their facility. Uh, so we see uh, pretty aggressive growth throughout the U.S. And I think, you know, one thing that's really attractive about this model is, is we don't have some of the constraints that you would in other parts of supply chain. So if you wanted to open up a grow, um, it's a very CapEx heavy um, investment that takes a long time. Right. Um, we can quite literally have a lab up and running and producing plants in a matter of months with the, the right partner. Uh, and then we also see a tremendous opportunity in the international market. Um, you know, these countries that are coming online, you know, several countries a year we're seeing, you know, legalized in one form or another, um, cannabis, um, either medical or recreational, are, are experiencing all the same problems that we experience here in the U.S. from a growth perspective. So, uh, you know, we have the benefit of being able to grow very quickly in the U.S. market. But then as we get into the international market, our model shifts a little bit in being able to um, export and import genetics, which we currently can't do in the U.S. So let, let's 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 take that to a whole nother level. Um, so one, it seems like the, that your business is performing pretty well. OK, is that a safe assessment? I think that's fair. Yes. OK. Um, so you mentioned some international, you mentioned domestic. So before I ask you a few more questions about the business, what are some of your canvas predictions for 2024 and canvas predictions for 2025, whether it's here in the U.S. or internationally or both? Yeah, no, um, great question. Well, uh, my prediction, which I think is hopefully going to come true here, is uh, is rescheduling. So that's a, a nice uplift for uh, for cannabis companies. But in terms of the market, I, I, I really believe, and if you look at other you know similar um, uh, industries, this this 
industry has had a tremendous amount of pressure put on it for full vertical integration, right? And so you see a lot of these MSOs and a lot of these bigger companies that ha have had this requirement of, of just owning their entire supply chain. And it 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 is a, tr is a huge challenge to do every part of the supply chain perfect. And so what we're starting to see and what we're seeing, you know, we believe we'll see through 2024 and 2025 is a less of a focus on full vertical integration and more of a focus on specialization. And um, and so, you know, groups uh, like Conception that are hyper-focused on a very specialized part of supply chain will continue to grow at uh, a very healthy rate. So, Kevin, I really appreciate you talking about your thoughts, what's going to happen in the cannabis industry here in the U.S., but also internationally. And you mentioned that uh, Conception, your company, is going to be doing work internationally and has continued to grow, grow, and grow. So with that being said, I got to ask you the question, is the company fully capitalized? Or are you still looking to bring on some more additional capital? Yeah, you know, great question. Uh, we spent the better part of the last four years hyper-focused on the science and we have nailed the science. And for us, it's about growth and growth capital. Uh, we do have some room available in this round. I would welcome anyone to, uh, to come uh, discuss it with us, look at the deck. This is 100% growth capital into new markets and we're very excited to continue on this trajectory. Can you just, for our viewers one more time, uh, I, you said you grew 200%, what, 2022 to 2023. Yep. If I'm correct, you are also expected to grow another 200% from 2023 to 2024, all right? You're yep. adding on additional states. So it's kind of safe to say you're you're kind of adding more, this capital just be adding more fuel to the fire and just really helping with the expansion. That's exactly right. Uh, look, again, the first few years, it's all about the science and it's really what separated us from the competition and why we've been able to thrive. As we expand into more states, we can do so in a very CapEx light way, uh, but we still are looking for you know the, the, the sales and marketing infrastructure to continue with that, uh, that growth trajectory. Well, Kevin, I appreciate your time today. Um, it was great to learn more about Conception. Congratulations on all the success. Uh, before we we end off for today, is there any information that you think our listeners or viewers really know about you and Conception at all that we didn't talk about? We have built um, one of the most um, futuristic, impressive uh, facilities in, in cannabis uh, with a heavy emphasis on, um, on automation. Uh, our goal is to produce the highest quality product at the lowest possible price point uh, and to continue to bring value to our customer base through uh, through performance tested plants, through um, one of the only groups that's willing to you know absolutely guarantee pests and disease free plants out there and, and done at scale. So we're very excited to continue in this trajectory and to open up into new markets. Um, I'm sure at some point someone on this call here has consumed conception originated uh, product. And so we appreciate the support and look forward to, uh, to speaking with anyone about the raise. Once again, Kevin of uh, Conception, uh, we really appreciate you being here today. Congratulations on all your success. His information is listed right there if you want to get a hold of Kevin. And I would highly recommend if you're someone that is looking for a unique opportunity on a company that's consistently growing, you may want to reach out to Kevin Brooks over at Conception. So once again, Kevin, thank you for much for being here today. And for everyone listening, remember, always be willing to achieve your greatness because you got this.